scared of weight, can't intimidate. Yeah. 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 I guess we're starting on this video now. <laughs> we were just playing with these cue bells here, and now... We've made weapons. We've made weapons. We've decided to, to go at each other. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've seen, I've seen you do some really crazy things on Instagram. And I want to go head to head with them. So we're going to start with, uh, what do you say, the contralateral loaded quad fallout with the shoulder rock. Absolutely, let's do it. All right. There is a reason for this stuff. Is there well, really? There's two. I thought it was views. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I like just doing, like, if you look back through my channel through, like, over the, I started in 2007, mm -hmm. you'll see this history of, like, really strange exercises that I'll push for like six months just trying to set like what's the best I can do okay and a lot of people are like well how does that fit in how does that help you deadlift a thousand pounds and they think it's like getting ultra sciency and it's some and it's just like I like things that entertain myself <laughs> like well I've been lifting for 30, I mean, yeah. 32 years and sometimes you just got to pick something that I really enjoy at the time it's like nobody cares about this is before social media I would just chase it. it wasn't four views it was just but it's also a challenge in some other fashion, right? Okay, show us what a quad fallout is. Okay, so quad fallout is, it's also called a uh, reverse Nordic. Nordic. Yeah. The big, big miss here is a lot of people will break yeah. right here. That's cheating. And it is cheating. Yeah. It defeats, defeats the entire purpose of this movement. Okay, because the purpose of the movement is actually to move our stable end somewhere else and train off of at different points. So we have to lock this in and we're gonna move off of this end of the quad. Yeah. So this one, we wanna stay fixed. So we actually lock the quads in, stay in position here. This is the big miss. People will do this. Yeah, it's not the And same. they'll be like, whoop, whoop. Completely defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do here. So, uh, again, we're just gonna go back into some of these positions and hang out here and be able to control movement anywhere within that range. Yeah. That's a quad fall out. Yeah. But now we're gonna take it up. <laughs> no, no, let me warm up first, Chris. Yeah, we need to warm up. Let me warm up first. Guys, I got this movement from him. I started sticking him after quad extensions on leg day because, you know, the big stretch that you Exactly. Did, I couldn't find a good good thing to get that really big stretch component at the end of a, of a quad because everything's like tight. There's no like something that's really loaded with the stretch. Yeah. You stick these at the end of like a leg day right after quad extensions, like get off that machine, come over here. This will ruin your world. Absolutely. But, and so the way to start and build into this is actually have a band. I do, yeah, that's why those bands are right yeah, there. Yeah. So the bands on that stretching rack are there for quad fallout. And, and, and I use the bands actually quite a bit yeah. because usually I would do these at the end of a, a, of a session. Yeah. So one, I'm getting that active stretch at the same time that it's that tissue's engorged, right? Yeah. So we're getting that 3D stretch all different directions and we're getting a little bit of a flossing effect as well just because we're stretching through that position after heavy training and maybe some of the tissue's been shortened and we're getting that little bit of lengthening, I believe it has a significant impact on my recovery. I, I, I feel so too. Yeah. I, I noticed the same thing. You don't like it when you do them, but. And when the first few months of doing them, your quads will hate you. Good. Now you just gotta be so comfortable you can hang out and chill and just chat with us. How's it going, Gigi? Good, good. You know, I'm out here stretching my quads in multiple dimensions. Your groin shaking. <laughs> <laughs> we took our shirts off, we warmed up our quads and our hamstrings on the quad extension and hamstring machine over there. How much weight are we doing on this? This is, we got 20 plus uh, eight pounds, so 28 pounds. We're doing that? Yeah, that's what you put on here. That's a, <laughs> can this, is this possible to do? Or is that possible? All right, I'm I don't know about you, but I woke up this morning, I looked in the mirror, and I'm like, ah, oh,
Chris Duffin. I can do that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. Look in the mirror. I'll say I'm Chris Duffin. You know, I'm Chris Duffin. I woke up this morning. <laughs> do it. <laughs> <laughs> right here is easier. Okay. Okay. Leverages. The more closer I get, the further it's going to be away from my core. The more rotational effect. Yeah. And then we also have the lever this way to play with. Okay, you got the fallout part. And now, once you get in there, you can start shifting it a little bit. You do it. Okay. Are you kind of leaning to your right? Ooh. What the f Ooh. Ooh. Okay, Chris Duffin <laughs> wins style points. I don't think you can kill this man. <laughs> Push away, pull. I realized you're over there. Like I probably shouldn't do that. Like put it behind me. And while you were there, I was, I was like, I don't care if it hits him. <laughs> I was about to say, don't, don't crush him. There we go. You feel light up those obliques too. Well, I can see it lighting up the police. So yeah. Get it out all through there. Gah. That right there. So we're working there that chain go. all the way through the body. Talking about a challenge is just not usual. <laughs> so is there a clear winner? Or we're we going to do a draw? I'm going to give it to him. Okay. I, I would too. That one. Uh, I think just by a hair, just with style. We got a freestanding sissy squat with a transformer bar. And I saw this on his Instagram. I copied it. Uh, people thought I was nuts, just like they think you're nuts when you do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, it hurts my knees, but that's because I try to jump up as much weight as he was doing. Yeah, and it's something I built to. So yeah. I've been doing quad fallouts forever, then transferred. I've been doing sissy squats for a long time, adding load. And then finally it was like, hey, let me see if I can actually do this loaded freestanding. So yeah. it wasn't just yeah. like, you don't just jump in and try this stuff. Yeah. Uh, because if you do, then it is dangerous. Right. But just in and of itself, it isn't if you build that, the, the, the strength in that arena. Uh, standard sissy squat, uh -huh. right? So we can do, this is actually a good way to warm up transformer bar because we got this little flexible. So I'm gonna oh. drop through here. Right. Oh, cool. So I didn't see this on your video. Go ahead and grab that on that end. Yeah. And do a couple warm ups. Okay. You definitely gonna help your ability to do this and also just learn the pattern. So a big piece of this is learning that pattern. Man, knees over toes so, guys stock is going up every day. Yeah. So so the other the traditional way to do this freestanding is put your arms behind you. Uh-huh. Here. Whoa. Or you can put them in front and do a little bit of a counterbalance. And the trick, oh, that's, that's just like what you're doing there, try not to, yeah. Oh man, that's money. This Sam heard something off camera she liked. I, I did. So we're not doing a quad fallout, so we really want to think about shooting the knees forward and then just staying over the top. And just the fingers there to balance is a great way to learn. And just get this pattern refined and kind of firing. I just there asked, we go. I just asked Chris, when was the last time you coached someone on this? And he said, never. <laughs> I never coached anybody on this, yeah. <laughs> This is playtime for me. Like this is just stuff I do that uh, uh -huh. I enjoy doing. What do the people in your gym think about when you uh, when you do this type of stuff? I think they're just so used to it. Yeah. Like yeah. Like whatever. That's... I don't I don't see a copycatting or things like that unless it's things that are starting to get involved in my training. Like the quad fallouts. Those were those were part of my training. Yeah. Just as how you've integrated those. Uh, great value, and you may see some of, mm -hmm. some of that happen. But what, they call them stupid duffing tricks. You know. So yeah. <laughs> You have no idea how hard that is. Hey, you went deep as hell, too. Don't you love it when you beat someone 10 years younger than you? <laughs> Brian, 
Come over here and, uh, and watch me do this. Okay. I just need another pair of eyes on me. Aaron, you watching me? You want I'm me? I'm watching you. Just, just stare at me. I, I, I need anything at this point. This is Chris is definitely staring at you right now. Yep. Oh. Oh, come on. Go down. Go down. Yes. Yeah. 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 Try again. You got that. I didn't realize how low I was. Yeah, you went. Uh, you were going high, 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 and then you just went way low. <laughs> well, the difference between going high, 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 and low, low, and, and all the way down was like it didn't feel that much different. All of a sudden, it just felt. <laughs> I hit that thing. Yes. That was it. I can do better. All right. That is some strength, man. I mean, I don't know, man. It's just crazy. I love this. I'm having so much fun with this. No one else can do this shit. You know what I mean? It's just like... <sighs> I'm glad you get to experience it, because uh, there's a lot of people don't understand like, the crazy weird stuff I do. Like, Yeah, how hard it really is. This is, yeah, I, I can't do this. I'm gonna have to do it. Uh, let me try the other one again. There you go. Yep. There it is. Oh. For me, there, there is, it's a weird kind of, there is a slight fear component. I yes. don't know, it's not like a trick, like a flip that you're scary, like an aerial thing. That's a, that's a, that's definitely just like straight up fear. But this is like, there's still some sort of inhibition there. You know what I mean? There, there's, there's a process of, of overcoming that just like yeah. anything else. That's part of the, the training process. I mean, do you think like putting, like when I squat at a thousand pounds, like, you're, you're gonna have some fear, and the fear is gonna hold you back until you can get over that. Right. And that's part of the process is acclimating to that, not just the load, but the mental load. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's real. It's like there's a certain part where you don't wanna go any further down. It's almost like you're sitting on a toilet seat that's dirty, and you know, <laughs> you know? You're good. I, I don't think you need to go again. You I was gonna go again. I wanna get him better. All right. <laughs> the motto is, there's always more. There's always more? There's always more. You can always be better. Wow. Yeah. That's it. You were you were there. Ah! Ah! I knew I could do better. Can you imagine? Better. Can you imagine judging this at a powerlifting meet? Yeah, three, like red light, white light. This is like, what the f do I do with this? It's really controller, but I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm my last try. There it is. God damn it! You got it. No. <laughs> oh my god. We should have stepped this one at the end of the workout. <laughs> All right, it's two for zero um, since uh, we're doing three events. I think there's no way for me to catch up, but I can try to get one more point on the next event. I, I think you got it. Okay. This next one is definitely uh, more acrobatic uh, focus. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is our third event. Oh, nice. <laughs> I think you're going to have me in this one. I don't know. We'll see. So he's got a PR on this. Uh, play the video on the screen. Boop. Pretty impressive. So uh, I've never even tried this. That was a long time ago. I haven't, I haven't done this in a long time. And like I said, I got a lot of elbow and other trauma. So yeah. But this is a fun one that nobody really does. Now the windmill part we haven't got to yet. That was, Ooh. That was the windmill part. Ooh. Now, now I'll show you the windmill part. I don't even know if I can do it anymore. On the bicep, but we'll try. This is the normal part, right? The windmill now is stay down there. Okay, hold on. Take the bar one direction. What? And then the other. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Can I rest on my arm? Like yes. Right? Okay. Wait, what? Yeah. Yes. This is real? Yes. I thought that was just like, oh. Okay. So, watch my shoulder here. This is what we're doing here. This movement, oh my. It's like an arm bar through uh, extends both directions. Ooh. 
I already feel it right there. Yeah. Just yeah. like in the warm up, just yeah. it's, it's being torqued and stretched. Yeah. It's a long way down there, isn't it? One way. Oh no, our fake plates are revealed. <laughs> It's just pushing me down. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. What body part day is this for my bodybuilding crew? Is this legs? What is this? Is this back? What muscle group does this work? Brain day. <laughs> Brain day. Brain day. Seven and a half weeks out. What's that? What's your workout split looking like, Gigi? Oh, I don't know. tested it first before he did that. He, he just wanted to put the fear into the ball it, before he did yes. You know what it is. <laughs> it's the anabolic yeah. lawnmower. No, no it wasn't a, a failure. That was something. No, you gotta scare the weights. You gotta intimidate yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh! Ah! I mean, I feel like, I don't feel like it's impossible. I mean, if you, if you did this stuff regularly, if someone were to do this stuff regularly, without, if they had like a, a conventional training goal, but did this stuff kind of regularly and spiced it in, it would do some really interesting things for your top end goals, you know what I mean? Like I can see this translating really well, but I don't know, it's just you don't think to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like these, these unconventional lifts. Well, it's a matter of, so what, what people get caught in is they get caught in, I'm training for powerlifting, I'm training for bodybuilding or whatever it is. And they're training for a meet or whatever it is like year round, they're sticking with that plan and not following an annual cycle and taking time to just step back, enjoy a little bit, and play around with other movements and capacities that they haven't. Yeah. I mean, it's, and then start blocking your way towards, you know, a goal. Right. So my training has always been annual cycles. My training for the thousand pound deadlift and thousand pound squat for reps was five years. Five years. Cycle. One year for the first, and then it took four years of preparation with it, and each of those was a year long training plan planned out for the deadlift and the squat in this block periodization fashion. And there was stuff like this in those intermittent at those times, because you can't just, you just can't stay there and be like prepping for a yeah. meet for three weeks, for three months, and then another one, and another one. Like that'll work for like two or three years. Mm -hmm. And then you, you get too specific, you quit getting that level of adaptation and working on some of the other weaknesses and, and qualities. So we gotta think about these other qualities. You've got some great qualities of explosiveness, mobility, yeah. things like that. And so we get stuck in this paradigm of pushing certain qualities of training so far and we just quit making progress because we lack those other ones. Does it help you in the short term? No, uh -huh. right, right? 
So in the short, that's the problem. Like if I do this in the training cycle during a year, is it going to help me with my goal at the end of the year? No, not really. Yeah. But training is cumulative and it happens over a really long period of time. Right. And if we focus on building other qualities at times while maintaining the qualities that we've already developed. So for you, you're prepping for a bodybuilding show with, you can still do the splits. Are you pushing that level? you know, to, to try to increase that? No, right. but you're able to maintain that right. while you work on your hypertrophy. Right, and we can, actually while I work on my hypertrophy, the fact that I had brought that up to such a strong and large level before is translating then you into don't helping me out here. And the same thing with yeah. endurance, explosiveness, the neurological components of strength. Don't forget them, but we can't, it's not as effective to develop everything at once. You're gonna hit, so it's like, maintain what you have, yeah. drop it to a lesser level so you can focus on those other qualities. Mm -hmm. And people always think about just strength or size. And it's like, think about the qualities. Yeah. Bam! Yes, 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 yes! Get. Oh! oh it's just falling off balance. Oh my god. I had it, man. It's you did! Yes. You had that lock in right there. This, is, this is a little bit of the trick of uh, learning the exercise is getting yeah. the balance of the weight too. This is gonna be dumb, but let me switch on. <laughs> No, in no way. I, I don't know. Sometimes arm wrestling for me has been like that. It's like or grip training, for example. Yep. Like it's you'll go all day on this one. You switch it. Oh, I just PR. Yes. What the fuck? Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, I think that's good for now for me. That was uh, it's something else, man. Three for zero. Chris beat the shit out of me today. <laughs> Hope clear. Like, that's it's old man strength. <laughs> I want some of that. Well, that's that's really encouraging, man. Because I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm 35, and a lot of my capacities are starting to go away. But I'm still able to maintain a lot of them, like older than a lot of people who do this stuff. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, so it's really cool to have someone like you, you know, as a, as an example of what you can do to maintain, your, like not only like top end strength. I mean, you're an animal, right? But like some of this weird shit that you only expect like 20 year olds to do. You know, I don't know if 20 year olds can do <laughs> some of the stuff. So it's, it's really cool and it's just, There's also to me play. it's inspiring because it's just always having someone else that's further in the game and has been doing it longer than you and is older than you just gives you the like, hey, I'm not just gonna fall apart when I get old, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, it's uh, that, that mentality we've been thought for a long time is like, you're gonna do it until your back gives out, your knees gives out or something along those lines. And that only happens if you're doing your training wrong or you're moving with really poor quality. Mm -hmm. If you're starting to lose mobility, it, it's not the squats that are doing it. It's the fact you're squatting like shit, right? Yeah. So, or you're squatting too frequently to, for your ability to recover, yeah. right? So, and, and there's science behind this. 80% of uh, injuries come from poor training plan, 20% come from movement quality. Uh -huh. And so th this is, it's, a, it's not the, the, the paradigm that we've always been told that it's going to be that way and it's going to fall off and you're at your peak in your early 20s doesn't have to be that way especially with strength because it's so neurological and so cumulative like yeah. being able to put on mass and being able to you know so so both the size and the strength are something that take long periods of time right wow so so I there's still, a beauty to it i can still get bigger right yes you can <laughs> good see that's what i wanted to hear that's you can good. get bigger and stronger for quite some time that's amazing all right, guys, check out Chris Duff and check out his brand, Kabuki, and your supplement company as well. Build Fast Formula. Mm -hmm. And don't forget the best and minimalist shoes for, for footwear uh, as far as uh, foot mechanics. Built barefoot. Bare. There's a reason behind that. If you check me out, you'll understand why. Nice Running around, in the, uh, <laughs> running around in, the, in the woods with no shoes. Man, I've been wanting to meet you for a while, and I'm excited about doing more work with you. Thank you.